Hello viewers, <clears throat> today I am sharing a case of infected dominant tibia after intramedial nailing. Patient had 15 cm bone defect which was treated with trifocal osteosynthesis with Elisa method. These are my contact details. These are a few things which I treat commonly. Uh, this video may show some graphic content. Viewers' discussion is advised. There is no conflict of interest. And basically, this video is for educational purpose only. Not, this video is intended to give a glimpse to younger orthopedic surgeons that how such complex injury can be managed with Eliza technique with excellent functional outcome. Besides this, such case presentation gives motivation for limb salvage to many patients across the globe suffering from such complex situations since long duration without optimal functional outcome. Not intended to substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Seek advice of a qualified health provider with any question you may have regarding your medical conditions. So this case, 30 year old male sustained vehicle accident. He was from low socioeconomic class, farmer by profession. He was treated in peripheral center and he had grade 3 B injury tibia, commutated fracture tibia fibula. Treated on day one with interlock nailing, but he presented to me at three months with exposed bone, implant, infection, and shortening. This is the radiograph at the time of presentation. One can appreciate that there is a commutated fracture of tibia, interlock nail in situ, segmental fracture of fibula, and there is some overlap at distal fracture fibula side. That means the fracture uh, limb was shortened initially on the index surgery. Clinical picture, one can appreciate exposed bone, implant, large row area over posterior medial surface of tibia, first discharge, and this patient has not walked since day of injury. Closer look at fracture site, clinical picture, there is an around 8 cm exposed bone with exposed nail, and there is first discharge. So what are the treatment options for this patient? Index surgeon had suggested flap core followed by bone graft, but in presence of infection, this is not a viable option. One can offer muscular technique or segment transfer with Elizaro or LRS. As flap plus bone graft is not viable option in presence of infection and due to financial constraint and non ability to a plastic surgeon, patient consulted to me. I suggested him option of implant removal, removal of loose vascular precious, refreshing of bone ends and Elizaro fixed application. As intramedial infection tends to involve whole length of canal, delayed corticotomy is preferred as compared to corticotomy at the time of index surgery. Detailed counseling done with patient and relative about number of procedures, hospital stay, follow-up visit, expense, expect period in frame. Dotted black lines suggest the tentative area of resection. It means once we remove all loose avascular pieces, then also the bone ends will have an irregular surface. And if such irregular surface comes in contact at the time of docking, they will not have an optimal surface area while docking. So it is better to refashion bone ends at the time of index surgery only, so that at the time of docking, patient will have an optimal bone surface contact area that will lead to solid union and minimal chance of refracture. A strategy of treatment one can opt for single corticotomy or double corticotomy. If a single corticotomy is done, the treatment strategy would be termed as a bifocal treatment, where there is a simultaneous destruction of distal corticotomy and compression at gap site. This white dotted line is, is suggestive of tentative area of resection. Red dotted line is suggestive of tentative area of corticotomy. And white solid lines are the place where ring will be placed. In order to prevent equinus, one should give a foot ring in a gap which is larger than 6 cm. If one opts to reduce time in frame, one can opt for trifocal treatment, where there will be two corticotomy and dissection will be going on at two corticotomy site and compression at docking site, uh, non union site. White dotted line, suggestive of tentative area of resection, same rod dotted line, distal two tibial corticotomy, white solid line, suggestive of ring placement, and should be given to prevent equinus. This is how a prefabricated ring will look. If we watch closely, the rods between first and second ring are at intermedial fourth hole and posterior fourth hole. Rational behind this is the all four 
are applied in a such a manner that that will not obstruct radiological assessment at the time of docking post docking rods are kept at zero level on both side with compression those rod will become longer and these are changed at each follow up visit rods between second and third and fourth third and fourth rings are kept at zero level distally and longer at proximally to ensure that there is an adequate place for destruction rods are not kept too long that is done intensely in order to ensure that patient comes in follow up visit once the rod length is over this intraoperative clinical picture post debridement removal of nail comminuted bone pieces removed bone ends refreshing as one can see here that both proximal and distal bones are transverse proximal and distal both canal rimmed up to 12 mm soft tissue debridement done thorough saline irrigation done and wound closed in layers this is the resected bone one can see that the scale is there around 13 cm bone resected and there is some fibula overlap so 2 cm shortening so overall the defect is gap plus shortening so overall gap defect is 13 plus 2 around 15 cm as the defect is too large trifocal osteosynthesis is better and in case of infection post intramedullary nailing delayed corticotomy is preferred as compared to corticotomy done at the time of index procedure proximal fragment fixation with one olive two kvas and two half pins which are placed anteromedial and anterolateral location 13 cm gap and fibula overlap is there <clears throat> this gradually distracted so fibula overlap overall address metaphyseal corticotomy done with free hand technique and diaphyseal corticotomy done with multiple drill hole technique corticotomy done at 6 weeks and individual rods are connecting each ring instead of one rod connecting from first to last ring and foot ring applied to prevent equinus these are images during transport one can appreciate that the diaphyseal corticotomy destruction is less as compared to metaphyseal corticotomy as due to pain that destruction was little bit slower at 4 month 4.5 month patient was posted for docking and that was exactly 3 months post corticotomy one can see here the docking site is well aligned and there is residual transition between second and third ring which was addressed with bioplane hinges in motion oral alignment is good and regenerate consolidation is in progress once docking is done patient can come for follow up at extended period and here i generally ask patient to come at follow up after 2 month interval the 7 month image good consolidation going on at docking site and regenerate consolidation on 9 month same good progress of healing at 11 month i did a clinical testing what is clinical testing clinical testing is removing rods at docking site and regenerate consolidation site and check clinically whether this fracture has united or not and whether this regenerate is solid enough patient is pain free or not so we check abnormal movement in both frontal and sagittal plane if patient is pain free i ask patient to walk some distance in dressing room if patient is comfortable i ask patient to walk few meters in corridor and in this way we can assess the stability of regenerate and docking site this is a clinical picture of clinical testing all four rods removed and patient asked to walk this is uh, his video taken in my consulting room once you are sure that the regenerate consolidation in docking is good one can start the process of dynamization in which the compression and destruction forces are neutralized with loosening of nut at corticotomy and docking site number of rods are reduced from 4 to 3 and half pins are removed periodically in order to avoid stress sizer effect at the time of frame removal so <clears throat> at 12.5 month frame was removed so frame was kept from 10th of august 2021 to 26th of august 2022 total 12 5 month 382 days one can see that external fixity index is around 25.5 days per centimeter healing index is 22.7 days per centimeter a patient was protected in ptb cast for one month and brace for two month if one adds these 90 days to healing index then the healing index would be 28.7 days per centimeter so overall if we see the alignment is well aligned and functional outcome uh, no limb length discrepancy no equinus no deformity no axial deviation uh, good range of knee motion patient walking unaided post frame removal 
with some training and physiotherapy, his gait will improve over a period of time without any issue. Patient riding bicycle comfortably, static bicycle comfortably at physiotherapy department. Patient riding bicycle at on road comfortably with PTB brace on own to prevent refracture. <clears throat> So, if one evaluates the result of this segment transport with Pele's criteria, they are evaluated in two manner, bone result and functional result. Here, the bone has united without residual inflection, without residual deformity, without limbal discrepancy. And overall, cross-sectional area of regenerate is same as native bone. So, that falls in excellent bone result. Regarding soft is a functional result. There is no pain. Patient walks unaided, no equinus. Functional range of knee and ankle motion and able to perform activity of all daily living without any difficulty, including cross leg sitting and squatting. So, overall evaluation if <clears throat> one treats such patient with for limb salvage with a lizard technique, the most important goals are unaided walking and return to pre injury occupation. These two, both these two most important criteria are fulfilled in this limb salvage case. Oral number of procedures done are index surgery, which was major one, corticotomy done at six weeks, docking at four months and frame removal at 12.5 months, no flap cover, no skin graft, no bone graft, no pin tract issue, no axial deviation. Patient remained ambulatory during whole treatment period. So, what is the rationale behind two corticotomy versus single corticotomy? Trifocal osteosynthesis versus bifocal osteosynthesis. On an average, healing index is around 45 days per centimeter. In younger population, it may be less. In older population, it may be more, up to 60 days. In an younger person, it may be up to 30, 35 days too. That means on an average, 15 centimeter bone gap will require on an average 22.5 uh, months in frame. So from corticotomy to docking, patient needs to be in close follow-up around two weeks interval. So if single corticotomy does, is done, patient would require 10 follow-up visits as compared to 5 follow-up visits with single corticotomy. When frame is removed earlier, not only overall expenses of treatment and travel is reduced, but patient returns to pre-injury occupation earlier and starts earning. Dissection more than 1 million per day frustrates capillary repair, so one cannot distract at faster rate to reduce distraction phase duration. But one can do two corticotomy so that the gap can fill at earlier interval. As observed by Professor Catani, consultation time of regenerate bone segment is inversely proportional to its length. So two shorter segments will consolidate more rapidly than one long segment. And Dr. Paley recommended that use of trifocal osteosynthesis is in defect greater than 8 cm long. If you are having any query, please communicate on following numbers on WhatsApp or email me. It is practically not feasible to respond all individual case query on YouTube comment section. Thank you all.